I, I hope you all had a very Merry Christmas. And I really mean that. I hope you had a good Christmas day. I hope you had good times with your family. I hope you rested and relaxed a little bit. I hope that on the, I guess, consumerist side of things, that you got something that you wanted or needed. Also, I hope you got something that is kind of stupid, a toy or a game or you know something you enjoy that you would never buy yourself cuz there's there's really not nothing better than getting something stupid that you'd never get yourself i think there's something wonderful about that i do hope you had a great christmas and i hope that this year 2022 was just filled to the brim with joy and happiness for you. I know a lot of people had a bad year. I know a lot of people had moments in this year, days, weeks, months even, that were terrible. I know people that watch this show that lost family members. And... That sucks, and I'm sorry. I'm sorry that that happened this year. But I hope that if your year wasn't filled with joy and happiness, that you can hold on to the good. Because when it comes to the new year, nine times out of ten, it seems that all that anyone is talking about is how bad the year has been. And it can't have all been bad, right? There has to have been at least some small moment, no matter how small, that you can hold on to and say, hey, this year was worth it because of this. I really hope you had that. But all that aside, in the very least, through the ups and downs, I hope you had a ton of growth. I hope you learned something. I hope you were able to stretch your mind and that at the end of this year, going into the new one, you're coming out just a, a little bit better. Just a little bit better. I was going to do a New Year's episode tonight, but I thought better of it. I'm not saying it wouldn't have been fun. I'm not saying it wouldn't have been a good time. But I thought that that wasn't really what we needed right now. And maybe I'm being selfish here, but it wasn't what I needed. And so I thought, hey, let's do this instead. Let me connect with you. And I know this is a pre-recorded video. So this isn't that instant connection. It isn't live like you're used to. But I hope that despite that, that you're able to watch this and perhaps walk away with something good. One of the things I wanted to do in this episode, let's get the nitty gritty uh, stuff out of the way first. I wanted to let you know that there are going to be some changes at the beginning of the new year, starting next week with our first episode of the year. And I, w I didn't want you to be surprised. I wanted you to, to know what was coming before it happened so that, you know, I don't want the rug swept out from, from underneath you. I don't want you to, to get to a new episode and go, man, I didn't know he was going to do this. So I want to go over that first. And then there's something else I want to talk about. And we'll, we'll get to that. But let's talk about what's going to be changing. Because I really want to be pushing to make this show better. I want it to be more consistent. And I want it to be as strong as it could possibly be. That's the goal. And so I thought I might tell you what these changes are and and also speak to a question that's been plaguing my mind for months, and we'll get to that. The funny thing about the question is that I don't feel like the question is for me. I mean, it is, but I also think that this is a question for all of you as well. I think it may be the question that we need to enter this new year with. This, I think, may need to be in our minds as we, we venture into 2023. For those of you who are in my audience who are not Christian or particularly interested in Christian things, this, the bulk of this conversation, when I get to the question, might not be your thing. And that's okay. I think that you'll be able to gather something from it with or without that 
particular preference. And so I hope you'll stick around if you're if you're interested. But the bulk of this message will be for Christians. If you're sticking around, let's do this thing. If not, I wish you the best for this coming year. I hope you're prosperous. I hope that you grow in, in wisdom and in stature and in favor with God and men. But before we get to the meat of that question, I do want to let you know that there will be a few changes that I'm going to try out in the new year. As always, the time is going to stay the same. So it will be Thursdays, 8.30 p.m. Eastern for the foreseeable future. If that changes, I will let you know. But beginning in January, beginning next week, these changes will go into effect. And I will let you know who all is coming on the show very soon. I'm buttoning up the last little bits of the January slate, and I will... I'll push that everywhere and I'll make sure you see it. Okay. One of the things that will be changing is uh, for the entirety of this show being the mad ones. It has been incredibly free form that won't end, but I am going to start capping the main show at about an hour long. The extended conversations, the continuation past an hour, will continue on Rockfin and for patrons. So if you're really interested in that, there is a way for you to continue those long conversations. They will be continued in what I've been calling Last Call, and they're still going to be fun. During that time, more of the chat will be highlighted on screen, and conversation will definitely be more interactive. So I hope Hope you join us there. But that's that's the thing. Most people who go on YouTube and watch live things don't watch past an hour. And if they see two hours, two and a half hours, anything beyond that, they might not click the link at all. And that's not something that I want anymore. For someone to sit through two hours, they have to be initiated. They have to be interested. They have to be invested in some way into the show. So the extended show will now be for those who are initiated, for those who are invested in some sense. I hope that you'll join us there, but I understand fully if you don't. So please reach out to me directly if you'd like to know more or if there's anything you'd like to share with me, if you have any feedback, whatever. You know where to find me. It's all going to be in the links in the description. But as for the content of the show, I do want to be more conscientious and intentional than I have been before. That's not to say that I haven't been conscientious and intentional. I've tried really hard to be those things since I started doing a podcast at all back in 2016. But I want to be a little more serious about it with this show going forward. I think that things that are a little less serious, conversations that I know are going to be a little less serious, those fun little shallow bits and other things will stay in last call. They'll stay on Rockfin. They'll stay in the patrons only feeds. That isn't to say that I won't joke anymore or that my guests won't joke or will be super hyper serious all the time. That's not possible. We're still going to be ourselves in the episodes, but the main episodes, I really want to strive for them to be as top notch as possible. And I don't want them to feel thrown together like some episodes have in the past. Not a, I, I mean, not a whole lot, I don't think, but more than some people are comfortable with, I'm sure. Some have probably appeared to be thrown together last minute, and I'm not saying they were. They were. I, I want to move past that. I want people to know that if they come to this show, that they're getting something good every time. So, don't worry, I'm not changing. When Jess is around, she's not changing. We'll just be doing cool stuff and working hard to keep it to, to my standard and yours. But speaking of content, you know, I am the guy who books everything. You know, I figure out everything. I make it happen. I choose topics, guests, etc. But this can't only be me. So if there are any topics you think would be good, if you think there's a guest that would be particularly good, reach out to me. Tweet me, message me, TikTok me. For God's sake, send me a carrier pigeon. I don't care how you do it. Just let me know what you want more of. And don't be offended if I'm like, eh, I don't think that'll work. So just, just know that I want to hear from you and I'm not going to throw it out. 
but tell me what you want and let's figure something cool out. But that's it. As for the changes, that's all. No more of that. So let's get to the question. Let's get to the meat. The question that's been on my mind lately is a simple one. And really, it expands so much further than its original brevity. But I do feel like this is a question that was more or less placed into my mind rather than one that I started asking myself. The question's simple. Who do you want to be? But I think that this question comes with several other questions to ponder. Like, who am I now? Am I stagnant or am I growing? Who am I supposed to be? How can I be better? I, I think that these are all very important questions. They're questions that I've been asking myself for a while, for years, really. The further I walk, the more I realize that I am not, in fact, the man that I want to be. The man that I am today, yes, is better and stronger than the man I was five years ago, one year ago, five minutes ago. So there's progress. But am I making the progress that I want to make? Am I doing anything good? Am I fulfilling my purpose? What is my purpose? For me, I felt called as a teenager to communicate truth. I felt that I was made to write and to speak and to help people find their way to God through Jesus. But am I doing that? I mean, there's definitely some evidence out there to support that I have, but I feel like I could do better. I feel like I could make changes, keep working, keep running the race and fighting the good fight. And I want to. Desperately. But I think that this question goes deeper than just those little thoughts of myself and where I am. I don't want to seem too self-centered here. Um, but I have a great respect for Tim Mackey and John Collins at The Bible Project. They have spent years and have done great work showing the meta narrative of the Bible. They show how it's a giant story that leads to Jesus. And that's important work. And honestly, if you haven't spent any time looking into their work and diving in, I highly recommend it. They do a great job of showing what the Bible is, how to read it, what certain things mean, how to find the proper historical, cultural, and textual context so that you can understand it when you read it. I am forever grateful for them for doing this work because at, starting January, Pray for me. I've decided to continue my education and begin working on a master's degree. It's in biblical studies, particularly it's in apologetics and cosmogony. But I see this as a stepping stone towards a doctorate, which I'm thinking maybe ancient Semitic languages or Greek or something. I don't know. I just, I see myself going further and further in learning about God, about Jesus, about who the, who he is, about who he wrote to, about the original understandings, about, I just want to know more about God, and I want to go as deep as I possibly can. And if it wasn't for Tim Mackey and John Collins and my friend Coop, you may know him as the muted flag, I wouldn't be doing it. I mean, Coop encouraged the heck out of me. I could tell you the story of how I finally made the decision and it would blow your mind. We'll get to that in the new year. But here's the thing. When you take all of this information in, when you start peeling back the beautiful layers of the Bible, and when you engage with the gospel, when you begin to see who God, Jesus, and the Holy Spirit really are, how are we to respond? I think that there may be some place in the world for something like the Bible Project, but for humans. I'm tentatively calling it the Human Project, but I think that honestly, the Mad Ones encapsulates this, this idea rather well. Who are we supposed to be? What is humanity supposed to look like? What's our original intention? What's our purpose? What's the ideal to which we are to aspire? What does it mean to be human? Is there a new way to be human? These are the questions that I'm constantly asking myself. It's why I do a lot of the things that I do. These are the questions that I bring to the Father. Here's the big question for Christians. If Jesus is Lord, 
and he is, how are we to submit to him? What's the best way to respond to his character, to his actions, to his self-sacrificial love? I want to find out. I know it isn't legalism. I know it isn't being right all the time. I know it's not having the perfect systematic theology. I know it's not clinging to one tradition or another and feeling completely thrilled that we have found what is correct. I know it isn't all of the hallmarks of our rationalist and egotistical society, which is (laughs) pretty post-apocalyptic if you think about it. So this video this podcast, this short and hopefully sweet audio message that you're listening to or video that you're watching, this is an invitation. If you're interested in answering these questions, if you'd like to join me in this quest, I want you with me. I want you by my side. We are citizens of a kingdom that is far better, far bigger, and far more perfect than any that have existed before or will ever exist. When people think of church or the church, they think of ancient orders. They think of centralized institutions. They think of being right about every piece of dogma. And they think about being a part of some one true church. But one of the things I've been convicted about, one of my convictions rather, is that's that's not what church means. If you look at the Bible, where we insert the word church and impose our understanding of what that word means into the text, you find the word ecclesia. The word simple, it means assembly or gathering, if you prefer. Church is what happens when the faithful join together. In the first century, there were churches in Ephesus, Rome, Corinth, Jerusalem, and across the ancient world. All were separate, but together. They were all one body in many areas doing different things. But they shared a Savior. They shared the writings of those who knew the Savior. They, they sprung up all across the world. Little churches, all true. We will absolutely be united one day under the Lord in his fullness. We will have gathered together and assembled together as the one true church or gathering. We aren't there yet, but we will be. At this point in history, we are able to gather and assemble across the planet from the United States to Australia to China to Russia and to the ends of the earth. We can gather physically and we can gather digitally. We can church or tabernacle at any time and anywhere. We live in a beautiful time for that reason alone. So let's church together. Let's tabernacle together. Let's take on this question. Let's dig deep. Let's look deep into ourselves and root out the darkness and the evil that's hiding there. And let's walk into the light together. I think that this starts with one step. Just one. You need to, you need to take one step. This year, I'll be taking different steps throughout the year. I have some ideas and some plans that I'll let you in on as time progresses. And I'll invite you to them. But overall, I invite you to join me. Imperfect as I am, as insufferable as I am to some people, I pray that you'll be able to find Christ anyway. I pray that those who like me will be able to imitate me only insofar as I imitate Christ. As I say at the end of the show, every week, you have a chance to be a light in the world. So truly, let's, let's light it up. But back to the questions at hand. What does it mean to be human? What does it mean to be a new creation? Are you who you want to be? Who do you want to be? I want to be like Jesus. I want to be self-sacrificial. I want to lead people to Jesus, I want to be able to take up my cross and to follow him. I want to fight hard and I want to run this race.
fast. But how do I get there? How do you get there? Let's figure this out together. Let's do something really cool. Let's change ourselves. Let's change our families and let's change the world. But more than anything, let's unite with Christ. Let's become together the church. Not the one true church because we're not all together. We're not all gathered together yet. But let's come together. Let's allow ourselves to be changed by his sacrifice and his love. Let's make some things that can be used by those we love and by our progeny well into the future. I've asked this question, but I don't have an answer. I sort of do, but I don't really have an answer. But I do have a plan. And I pray that you will each ask yourselves this question and start making some moves. I pray that those who feel called will join me as I figure this thing out. And I also pray that you will forgive me for any noises that my children made as I was recording this because I had to put white noise into my ears so I could focus. But really, I pray that you'll, you'll join me and that we can figure this thing out. I pray that we can do something cool, something that reaches people that haven't been reached before. I pray that we can ask the right questions, the most interesting questions. I pray that we can uh, think of the questions that we're too dumb to ask and the questions that we think we're too smart to ask. I hope we can do some really great stuff, and I hope you'll join me. So that is my message. That is my question. And that is all I have for you. So... Merry Christmas to you all. Happy New Year. If you're a patron, please go to Patreon and answer my question about a New Year's party for us, a Zoom, where we'll play games and have a good time and chat all together. Um, please do that. Please check it out. And if you want to get in touch with me, you should know how to find me. If you don't, I've put all of that in the show notes. I've put it in the description. Find me. Let's talk. I love you all. And as always, you have a chance to be a light in the world. So go light it up.